longing, lust, love, life, Lorna. Ever wonder why wives wonder? Too much for one man. These are the sensual taglines to Russ Meyer's 1964 film Lorna, a groundbreaking film that's in very few people's cinematic vocabulary. Lorna is a relic from the sexual revolution. What is Lorna trying to say? It opens with a preacher slash narrator slash Greek chorus spouting Bible belt fire and brimstone, condemning nearly every character in the film and seemingly the audience that's about to view the film. It's a message of adultery that seems to blame the man for the a woman cheating, mostly because it's a Russ Meyer movie. The tragedy that befalls Lorna and her husband all stems from her husband not being able to satisfy her in the bedroom. She falls into the arms of a scary, sexy, escaped convict. Lorna is a sexploitation art house melodrama that takes credit for being one of the very early roughies. The character Lorna seems very disturbed and beside herself because of the double standards about sex and men and women. You'll never find a woman in a Russ Meyer movie guilt tripping herself about sex in a oh why do I do this sort of way. Her sexual needs are purely chemical. Lorna is a male sex fantasy but with a brain, with a pulse. We actually go inside of the mind of Lorna Maitland, which for a sexploitation film, especially in the early 60s, is totally unseen, unheard of. Women in these types of movies from this time period are usually wordless, brainless, mindless. Playboy spreads in motion. Lorna's husband is dumber than a bucket of rocks. From the way Lorna stays in bed late, refusing to make her husband's breakfast and lunch for work, tells us everything about her power within the time and place of Lorna. He's so bad in bed, she falls in lust with the first man who attacks her, literally, in a very strange moment that goes from violence to romance. The scenes of perversion are sentimental. The scenes showcasing sentimentality are always perverse. A good example of this is the roughy scene transforming into a passionate lovemaking scene. Lorna's husband sweetly says goodbye to her while she sneers back cold-heartedly. God forsaken home. And it's revealed that her husband, although thoughtless in bed, does actually care about her and making a better future. Because it's under Russ Meyer's guise, you're sort of rooting for her infidelity, but at the same time, you feel saddened because her husband is such a weakling. Lorna really demonstrates the two Russ Meyer male ar archetypes that are in all of his movies. There is the dummy the weakling, sad sap husband who's lightning quick in bed, and then there's the psychopathic stud. He, his only virtue is that he's great in bed, but the, a total piece of shit otherwise. So, um, Russ Meyer movies are great if you are into the genre of fighting and fucking, because that's seemingly what all of his characters do. They're either beating each other up, beating each other to a pulp, killing each other, or berating each other verbally, or no words, you know, as far as going going sexual going into the bedroom Lorna is out of the Hayes Code, you know, this is an independent film, so they really didn't have to follow anything of the Hayes Code of Hollywood. Uh, it still kind of plays by the rules by having the evil woman, Lorna, receive her just punishment. But as always with Russ Meyer movies, this morality has its tongue securely in cheek. So even though we have this preacher going mad and uh, berating all of the characters with his moral roadmap of what they should be doing versus what they are doing. It still just feels like Russ Meyer is doing this just to kind of appease the times that he lives in. And uh, Lorna did face a lot of censorship. Quite shocking for its time. Russ Meyer fought many court cases over it. Later on with movies like Motorcycle and Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, you can see how he downplayed the sexuality and there's I think virtually no nudity in either one of those movies. It's very, very subtle compared to 
Lorna and Mudhoney, his two first gothic sexual melodramas. Lorna is about a dissatisfied woman, a woman who has nothing to do, so she feels her empty heart in the arms of a stranger. So this movie is about women under financial bondage of their husband. He lives in the middle of nowhere with nothing to do, and he, he gives no thought to this, or has no kind of, huh, why is she so unhappy? He just, he does doesn't really understand this woman that he's married and um, doesn't really seem to acknowledge that she has a brain and a vagina. <laughs> Lorna's husband is nice and honest enough, but like most of the men in Russmeyer movies, he seems weak and has a very low IQ. Lorna and most of the women in Russmeyer movies are is very powerful. She's intelligent, she's sensitive and cruel. A bitch goddess who really holds the power in the relationship. Lorna was a film that was incredibly successful and a huge Money maker because it really was the first of its kind, maybe in the entire world. Many critics were quick to compare Lorna to previous efforts from the realist and neorealist from Italy, but Russ Meyer shot these artistic comparisons down, saying that he didn't like Sofia Loren or Silvana Mangano. Russ Meyer said, quote, I didn't hold them, the Italian masters, to any reverence. I didn't care for their movies, end quote. Critics compared it to the earthy sensual film Bitter Rice, but when you look at the two, they seemingly have very little in common. Lorna was the first serious naked lady movie. Before Lorna, there were nudie cuties, a genre pretty much invented by Russ Meyer and was copied by many people, which again were like playboy pinups set in motion. Lorna was a hard-boiled melodrama with more sex and violence than any film before it. It made Eve and Russ Meyer a fortune. It went to court over sense it made Lorna Maitland a celebrity. She was a star rising, but her debilitating mental illness mixed with permanent brain damage from copious amounts of LSD diminished her star. She was offered a seven movie contract with 20th Century Fox and it went to Angie Dickinson instead because Lorna was just so out of it. It's unknown whether Lorna Maitland is still alive and well. Her last whereabouts were somewhere here in Las Vegas, Nevada where I live so I keep fantasizing that maybe our paths have crossed somewhere in Las Vegas. I don't know. Maybe she's one of those old ladies chain smoking and addicted to gambling that I passed through in the casinos a million times. It's interesting to see Russ Meyer's first real film, real drama. There's only one or two scenes that have his trademark lightning fast editing and there's not that many surrealist cues except for maybe the part where Lorna is covered in salt. It's a allusion to the Bible story about the woman turning into a pillar of salt. A rather beautiful film for being rather unpleasant. A really unpleasant story. Repulsive characters. Uh, there are no good guys or good girls in this movie. So unlike any movie that would come out today, um, and probably, you know, I hate to say this, it probably would trigger people, but I just think of it as a sexual artifact from the early days of the sexual revolution. I'm sure seeing a naked woman or a man in a film in 1964 was like seeing a UFO back then. It was just so unseen, unheard of, uncharted territory. So despite its political incorrectness, I still find Lorna to be a fascinating and important film. Another film starring Lorna Maitland was Mud Honey, which it goes more, even more balls to the wall. It takes all the elements that Lorna had and really just does it up even more, double, triple. Those are my thoughts on Lorna and Russ Meyer, absolutely one of my favorite artists, somebody that I can revisit over and over again, and I feel like I'm always kind of laughing at something different each time I watch it. I'm sort of repulsed by something different each time I watch it. And, you know, that's what makes him such a great artist. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I notice a lot of people view my videos, but I don't have as many subscribers as I do views. So don't forget to subscribe and uh, turn on the bell so you can know every time I upload a new video. My name is Jacob Lomax, and thank you so much for watching Strangest Films.